For a closer look at President Putin's visit to Crimea, I spoke to Anton Fedyashin, head of American University's Initiative for Russian Culture, and I asked him about the timing of the stopover and its effect on this weekend's referendum. His visit to the Crimea is a show of support for uh, the Crimean people, uh, whose territory has been reattached to uh, Russia. And also, it's a show of uh, strength and a show of resilience on the part of the Russians. What do you think Russia's reaction will be following the outcome of that referendum, whichever way it goes? Well, I think the referendum will go uh, in favor of greater autonomy, which is the central question, simply because most people who bother to turn out to vote in it are going to uh, vote that way. But this is something that we already know most people in eastern Ukraine actually favor, because all opinion polls. Sorry, all opinion polls go in that direction. Um, at this point, I think the referendum is really a sideshow. Uh, it's not going to determine anything. It's simply going to register a trend that everyone already knows. The next big question is actually what's going to happen during the elections on the 25th of May. So will this influence what happens on the 25th of May? How closely are people watching this? Um, what do you think the outcome of that will be? I don't think the referendum is actually going to affect anything at this point because, again, it, it simply registers what is already a trend in uh, public opinion in eastern Ukraine. I think the bigger issue is that the military action of the Kiev government against basically what is uh, their own people in eastern Ukraine, that is going to influence the uh, presidential election on the 25th of May. And I don't think that there is any guarantee that after the election is finished that Ukraine will begin a process of stabilization. After all, the blood that has been needlessly shed in the east of the country because we have this date and you know some people think okay well we'll get to the 25th we'll get to what happens afterward and then what everything's going to magically subside what happens in the weeks after are we going to see a more unstable situation i think the instability will will continue uh there's a big question about what the kiev government will decide to do militarily from now on will it uh, uh stand down uh before the election and uh ease its military onslaught against uh, eastern ukraine or uh, will it continue and that will bring into a big question the very legitimacy of these elections and even after they are done and they're recognized the rada will have to be the ukrainian parliament will have to be re-elected also. And second, I can't imagine that people who have lost loved ones and friends in eastern Ukraine over the weeks that we've seen and over the weeks that may come ahead will simply lay down their arms after an election that many of them may not recognize and simply uh, toe the line that Kiev seems to set. So I don't think the election is in any way a silver bullet. It will not put an end to the instability. Only negotiations will. And this is the one thing that the Kiev government has refused to engage in. All right, Anton Fedyashin, we appreciate your time and your insight as always. Thank you very much.